All right. <laughs> and a three. And a two. And a one. It's Sunday, October 20th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate and Length, early morning edition, episode number 528. And, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great job. Mm-hmm. Our show. Yeah, Better and actually, 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 that was probably one of my smoothest intros, strangely enough. And Here's to that. <laughs> I'm yeah. still waking up. Uh, I do not have folders in my cup. I have caribou coffee in my cup. Ooh. Uh, in I fact, have, it's uh, it's it's the Viking blend that they have called Skoll. Skoll. Gary has what in his cup? I have a uh, lemon ginger tea with some special honey. Mm. Special, special honey? honey? <laughs> mm-hmm. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> that I had to order online. Cause ah. It's special. A, yeah. It's special. Special. It's actually it's special. It's not special. Anyways. Gary, what are we talking about today? Uh so sorry, I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Yeah, we have a pretty active chat for this early in the morning. I know. Although it's only two people, but you know, hey, it works. It's quite satisfactory. Mm-hmm. Um, now I have a zippity doo doo stuck in my head. Anyways, <laughs> um, random. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first off, apologies to everybody because we took two weeks off. Uh, one week was planned, one week was unplanned. We back. So, what better to do than to jump right into bed and talk about sexual satisfaction? Woo! What is it? <laughs> and why? <laughs> mm. It's that uh, uh, surprise blowjob you get in the morning. Okay. Mm. Well, mm. like, so... <sighs> Which, unfortunately, but, I haven't been able to get this weekend, but we won't get into that. Mm. So, um, <laughs> it was funny. This all came about to me, actually, because I just watched a, a new comedy hour uh netflix original of nikki glazer mm-hmm. and uh, it's called bangin and it is very adult like there is nothing about this comedy hour that is not she talks about sex pretty much for an hour nonstop um from a woman's perspective and it was really kind of funny to me in some ways and then it occurred to me because she does this thing about where you know women don't really necessarily have an orgasm or they think that they have orgasms and then they actually masturbate and then they find out what a real orgasm is so it got me huh. thinking, like, like, how would, when, and why, and, like, do we think about these things? Because I think men, just purely from my ignorant perspective, have it easier. Most men... Women no correct quant- us on this if, if we're wrong. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, quantitatively, most men know when they have an orgasm. Because... Fair. There's a byproduct, typically. <laughs> well, from my understanding, women also get a byproduct. It's just a little different. But I could be wrong. Right, right. So, but I mean, it's it's very evident for men. Mm-hmm. You know, men have an orgasm. Usually when they have an orgasm, they have ejaculate. So there's like a whole like thing going on, you know, of, of the of the cycle of the pattern. Um, mm-hmm. 
And for most individuals, I will not say all, you know, an orgasm is satisfactory. It releases endorphins and hormones, you know, the body floods, you know, with the happiness stuff. Um, and that's <laughs> theoretically the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, I don't, I think we simplify it way too much and way too often. That's what porn does. You know, porn yeah. is, porn is thrust, 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 grunt, 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 explosion. Uh, and that. Right. Um, yes. Um, it is funny. Just, you know, thinking about it. Um, you know, sometimes the satisfaction isn't just from the orgasm or the ejaculation. Um, for some, um, some of their satisfaction comes from getting someone else their satisfactory orgasm or what have you. Mm-hmm. There are many, many people who are pleasure driven and want to give and get pleasure. So they choose to, or not often deny, but choose to like, I would rather see you get off than me get off as it were. Mm-hmm. Like me getting off is not necessarily a requirement. I just want to, mm-hmm. I want to make you yeah. come. Um, it, I also kind of want to say, say that, that orgasm doesn't necessarily, sometimes you have an orgasm, but it's not necessarily satisfying if you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, I think we should talk about that, Jeff. Like, I mean, I've, I, fuck it. I've, you know, had sex that was not satisfactory. And yes, it ended in an orgasm. But I think part of me was just like, let's just get this over with. Um, I mean, hate to say it, but truth. Hashtag truth on that one. Because sometimes it's just like, I just want to, let's just, let's just get, I hate hate the way it sounds, but let's just get this over with (laughs) so I can move on with my day. (laughs) I mean, Sometimes I think we even do it to ourselves. Yeah. You know, like you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, well, hello there. Um, You know, and so most likely your bladder is pressing on your prostate. Your prostate makes you have an erection. It's early morning. You got to pee. And but maybe you don't really have that sensation to go to the bathroom that much. And you're just kind of like, oh, so I have morning wood. Let me just bang this out, you know. And, you know, three and a half minutes later, you're cleaning yourself up. Um you know, and then you can pee, right? <laughs> so, I don't know if I would say that was sexually satisfying. I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe you're you're you know you got a little good juju feel going on, you know, when you toddle off to go to the bathroom or something, you know, and it's a good start to your day. It's hard to say. So yeah, I mean, I think not all orgasms are necessarily satisfactory, um, yeah. or are a result of of necessarily um, satisfaction. <laughs> I think they didn't jerk off. Very they, true. They, they, hey, jerk off. <laughs> they say they say in studies that the, one of the ways to stave off prostate cancer and you know uh, like urinary tract issues in a way you know is to have a healthy you know jerk off every with some okay. frequency. Huh. So, interesting. So for those people that are you know masturbating, uh, one, two, three times a week or daily there you go there's your, your... <laughs> what, you um, yeah. what's that so the the <laughs> the <laughs> definition of satisfaction <laughs> thank you mr dictionary you're, you're welcome <laughs> is fulfillment of one's wishes expectations or needs are the pleasure derived from this it is a noun and okay. then you get into like the legal kind of things where it's the payment of a debt or fulfillment of an obligation or claim. And then what is felt to be owed or due to one, especially in reparation of an injustice or wrong. Oh, okay. So let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about that part where it says where it is due. Uh, so you decide to have intimacy with another person. Intimate. If you don't communicate expectations do you think it's realistic that it's a due outcome, no pun intended, that there's going to be an orgasm? Like, do you think that's the lay, like the layman common universal expectation 
of that kind of an interaction with another person. Mm -hmm. And the reason I phrase it that way is because, yeah, 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 like you can avoid all this if you actually talk about it, you know, yeah. and be like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to put my my DNA in your butt. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you say something yeah. or be like, you know, I want you to swallow all my swimmies. So, you know, <laughs> if you say something specific, <laughs> then <laughs> you could actually. <laughs> Sorry. Just swallow my swimmies. <laughs> so wow welcome to the early morning edition of uh, Loud. i'm fairly no morning person thanks to my job so the the <laughs> thing is is like if you don't have those discussions ahead of time like do we do we all kind of at least the three of us universally agree like there's an expectation if you're going to have some intimacy with another person aka yeah, I mean, sex it, it it really depends on the situation uh okay. because because sometimes it's just a, uh, a, a, a a random hookup, at least for me, um, and it's like I kind of don't know what to expect. All I expect here is that someone has an orgasm, at least that somehow. Okay. See, one, one that's that's the orgasm. that's the basis of this interaction. I don't necessarily know what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never actually expect necessarily satisfaction. Like, I don't know if this oh. is going to actually be satisfying, but I know that in the end, there at least is going to be one orgasm. Hopefully two, Cause... because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a nice person <laughs> and I want to make sure at least they do. Mm. And if, and if, or, maybe i do and sometimes they don't care they don't necessarily like we were talking like sometimes they're satisfied with me getting an orgasm and not them and... Mm -mm. but i yeah i'm reciprocal <laughs> well it sounds like you're trying to be you know equitable like you're trying to be fair like you know what's good for one is good for all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, and, and I get that. I think, I mean, it really, I think it's more about like what your focus is. Yeah. For me, I know primarily when I'm with other individuals, it's about me um, doing what I can do as my best to make sure the other person is satisfied. That's just yeah. kind of the way I've mm -hmm. put myself together in my, you know, mm -hmm. all these decades of life is, you know, I... I know there's reasons behind that, but I prefer to focus on the other person and make sure, you know, that they're satisfied. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> it's funny because I'm kind of in the middle. I can go both ways. Um, Switch. Sometimes I, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like sometimes I'm in I'm the mood you. to like, I want to get off and that's your job to get me off. I know that sounds kind of tacky, but that's kind of the way it is. Like, but I have, I have mostly usually approached the subject with that as the main concern. Like you are going to suck me off and they're like, okay. And I'm like, cool. And that doesn't necessarily mean though, that I won't do something to them. Um, but usually if I'm doing any kind of hookup of that kind of that nature, um, whether it's a one night stand or a, a semi regular, um, yeah, like I usually will say, like, like what do you want to do? Because I want to, I want to know what they want, what they want to do. And usually they will say, like, oh, I just want to get you off. I'm like, okay, cool. Then that's good. Then we're on the same page at this point. Um, if they wish to get off, great. I am happy to do so. Um, I have one semi regular playmate who. Knows exactly what to do. Excuse me. What? 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 You're sticking your head. Read the chat. Oh God, girl. You you, you know he can't multitask. We've already established this, right? Uh, no. When your bestie says something in the chat that you don't really care to read, <laughs> you shake your head. Moving on. <laughs> Hi, Drew. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so I have a my regular, you know person that I play with that they know exactly what to do. They want to get their, their job or goal is to get me off. And then when we're, when I have gotten off, 
I will help get them off, usually with just a stroke, because they are they that's all they need. They've enjoyed the pleasure of getting me off and they've played with themselves enough that they're pretty much ready to go and they just need like a little handy to like finish the job. Mm-hmm. And God, he's a big dick. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very lovely dick. But um, anyway, but that's like that's that's kind of the arrangement. Like that's kind right. of what we've done. And it is satisfying because and this is kind of maybe going into another topic because I know it's satisfying. Like he has never not been able to get me going or get me off or get me out. Okay. Cause he, cause he, I, I, I know I'm going to be satisfied with him because he does a really good job of what he knows what he's doing. Well, and he's and, been and, around. <laughs> right. And you've had the experience. And so you're repeating again. Like, that's the key. Like, this is this is yeah. not a one night stand thing where you walk away and you're like, well, I guess they were satisfied because, like, you know, I now have, you know, hair stiffener in my beard. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you if you have there's a repetition factor, then that kind of makes it much more obvious in terms of, like, the satisfaction aspect because um, it keeps happening again and again. Find yeah. out that and one person who who just like pushes all the right buttons. He knows exactly what to do and he does it well. And I appreciate it very, very much. It's a, it's a reliable uh yeah. either FWB or FB, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Depending on how the relationship goes. Mm-hmm. And I need you know, a more reliable some... FB. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, y'all. I will say that much, you know, because that's the one thing, the one problem, I guess, with with the online nature and the hookups, you know, sometimes you, like we've been talking about, you don't always know that you're going to be satisfied if you're just doing, like, random, you know, things. Or, or, you know, maybe you have someone that you play with and they've, something has changed in them and suddenly they're not really as satisfying anymore or yeah. vice versa. Something may have changed. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so right. exactly. Well, so. I mean, that's, that's exactly what's happened with me. You know, like I, I'm not really going to shy too much away from it. You know, when 2018 was not a, a great year for me and I spent a good portion of it being depressed and I put on a, a whole bunch of weight and, um, you know, it's really kind of affected me in various ways. So I don't feel the same as I used to physically as well as, you know, mentally about stuff. And this one person who was semi-regular, um, just, you know, as a, as a you know, hookup kind of a deal. We don't really know each other. We're not complete strangers, but it's like we're not invested in each other's lives by any means. Breaches out every now and then, and I feel bad because I'm like, we haven't seen each other in one. I'm kind of like, hmm. Like, I'm not really sure you want to get together. Um, mm. Because we haven't seen each other. Like, you know, it was, yeah. it was purely a, you know, random hookup to begin with and it still is in a way it's just you know they lived out of town and it was kind of more one of these things like when they come into town and i'm like you know yeah so you know i i think there's a part of me that like is concerned about their satisfaction because i don't know how much of me is really like the goal yeah or is it just simply you know the getting off aspect and they kind of really don't care um, not yeah. about how, you know me necessarily, and I know that sounds really like, probably mean, but you know the reality is it's like if you're just looking to get off, like how much are you really investing in, yeah, the moment or yeah. the person if there it's is true. a person and all that. That's so true. Like there have been many times, and I will I will own I have been like online looking for something, and I'm just not getting it. Like you, you're just like like, I don't know what it is. Like something that's just like, this is really not gonna. This is not working. Like I'm trying to talk with somebody and and uh, the, the 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 sparks aren't flying. It's just not you know, things aren't connecting. And so eventually, for my own satisfaction, I just get myself off. Like because I'm just like I can't like this is nothing is working. Nothing online is doing anything. I've got maybe 10 minutes left before I have to like close the door on all, you know, potential hookups. So 
uh, this isn't going to work. So I'm not going to get it. So, just run out. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, so, I mean, not unfortunately, but, you know, sometimes you are your own best, you know, or person to get, your, yeah, to get yourself off sometimes. Your satisfaction is there. Um, right. You know your body. You know yourself. You know what you enjoy. Um, and so what's the harm, as it were, in just you know, pleasuring yourself? Uh. I I think that there isn't harm, but an unintended consequence or complication could be uh, that that's the only way. Mm. True. I've so, met many. I've met many a person that like you can do anything and everything to the world to them, and they just don't like their body doesn't get it going fully. Until they basically take the reins and right. do stuff for themselves. And you may be able to help in some ways, smaller ways, you know, like playing with the nipples or making out with them or, or you know, maybe sticking a finger in their butt, you know, whatever. And but then but that's you're not, you know, they really pretty much are like dicking hand, their hand and jerking right. themselves off. We've been there. We've all seen that. Right. Well, I mean, and, and you know, everybody's wired differently. Like, I'm there. intrigued by individuals that their nipples, you know, are not only connected, but like, like, they're like controller knobs. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's kind of like, you know, if you do certain things and kind of crank them all the way up, like, you're going to get, you know, uh, yeah. you know, a sticky, happy ending out of it. Um, I'm, I'm not that way. So I don't, uh, have that concept, that, that understanding, you know, I mean, I do because I see it, you know, in a video or whatever, but like, that's not something that is a, you know, an experience for me. Yeah. And it's sad when you have to tell you're people usually, your you nipples are like wired. Nipples played with. Um, I don't really consider it sad that you have to tell someone that they're not connected. I just try to let yeah. them know it doesn't do yeah. the same for me. Yeah. I've had people, I, I mean, nipples are my thing. Like I love nipples. Like I love playing with people's nipples. So I will usually, cause it's so much thing, a thing that I enjoy playing with and watching people react to them that I have to actually ask now because there I've ran, I've run into a number of times people that don't want their nipples played with at all. Not that it doesn't do anything for her, but it does. It has the opposite effect. That it makes things worse. Right. Well, I mean, and that's so. Here's one of the the. This is a little slightly off topic, but I mean, it's a it's a complication. Is like when you do something to someone else and they really enjoy it. People have a tendency, in my experience, to reciprocate because mm -hmm. it works for them. So they're thinking like that it might work for you, and it's mm -hmm. like meh. Like, you know, <laughs> that's not a thing for me. So the fact that yeah. you really enjoy it and or like it, you know, isn't always going to work the other way, um, you know, and especially if they're into, I don't want to say pain, like as in a negative, but like mm -hmm. there's a there's a stimulation, um, you know, there's a sensation to. Uh, certain aspects, you know, that they're like when you start you know, using they, the teeth on the nipples, right? Um, and that, you know, so then they reciprocate. You know, it, it's like mm, 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 same thing. Please stop! Don't. You know. yeah. yeah. The nice thing is usually they end up they start by just just sucking on mine, and then I'm like, just to let you know, those aren't wired. <laughs> they don't work for me. Yeah, just like which is fine at least and then they and know it, and yeah like i have um it tends to be i know it seems weird but it's usually part of my, my like foreplay aspect it's like to fill the body out and see what gets arise as it were out of the person yeah. you know do they enjoy getting like you know 
do they enjoy having their nipples played with? Do they enjoy their balls being, you know, fondled? Do they enjoy like a hand as well as a mouth on their dick? You know, you try to need to find those things out to kind of help the situation pass with satisfaction for both. Potentially. I like <laughs> trying, I like, well, I like finding those things out. Like mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I do enjoy is like, what, what gets you going? What gets you hard? What gets you like, engage what can i do that will bring out those animal moans. instincts as it were. yeah those moans those groans those those um growls as it were and yes it is different for every person believe it or not well and i think that's one of the key aspects is like you know there's there's a repetition there's a familiarity mm-hmm. um between persons but i think like it's more experience that you have the more you kind of understand like oh this is not always going to be the same thing Mm. you know it's kind of like playing a game you know you have a controller and you have certain buttons and you know and and knobs and things and like you can't always use the same play every single time it's just not going Mm -hmm. to work and um i think that's just an experiential situation you know with uh the more you do that you realize like oh not everybody gets off from you know, fill in the blank. Um, and you kind of have to, to <laughs> work with that. Mm-hmm. So uh, Owen had said, kind of said in the chat, there was something that we said earlier he wanted to comment on that he doesn't think it's necessary to finish to be satisfied. Which I think people have a hang up about. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think that we've cultured ourselves to think that, especially as gay men, that you know ejaculate with an orgasm is the satisfaction like Mm -hmm. that is the goal and that therefore is satisfactory so how many videos have you seen where it's all the cum shots right and you know and you get the you get the cum shot from about three or four different camera angles depending on the production (laughs) company so it just like are repeated on a loop and then slow mode for some weird fucking reason. <laughs> yeah. There's an entire there's an entire video called Big Shots, which it's all about the cum shots. Yeah. Well, some people are kind of like I that that part doesn't bother me. I don't watch it, but you know, the, it's kind of like there's part of me that's like this is not realistic. Like, you know, mm. and this it, is usually this is usually done in just a matter of a couple of seconds, not thirty seconds. You know, camera one, camera two, camera three, <laughs> camera four. <laughs> like, like, right. Extreme slow mo. Like, come on. And well, you're like, it, and uh, sometimes uh, that's the satisfaction for like somebody who's who's watching the the voyeuristic is they get they get satisfied from watching other people come and getting even that slow mo shot. That's like a. Oh my God! Look at that cum shot, or something like that. So, I mean, I don't. I have no problem with slow mo cum shots when it comes to porn. So, um, I, 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 I think that may just not be your thing. Um, but uh, for some people, it's sometimes it, it's 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 hot for me when I'm jacked. I think or it's like that. I think it could be overused in adult media. I'll put it that way. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't feel like it's overused though. Like I, I think it's only <laughs> at these certain times that that I see it. <laughs> so, um, I, okay, I'm just gonna say this and own it, and I'm sorry. I don't know if they're still in production or not, but Cyber Bears was notorious for this, like two or three multiple cum shots, and also doing a slow mo. Like they were notorious, and every video had it, and it was kind of like, I really don't. I don't. I don't. Okay. I personally do not need to see the cum shot multiple times. I, I, I don't think Cyber Bears is, is doing any more productions anyway. So. I, I, I'm pretty sure they're not. But, you know, if they were, you know, just note to self, note to Cyber Bears. Like, or anybody that wants to make film. Yeah. We don't need to cum shot three times. Uh, unless that's specifically what the video is. Hence, Big Shots by Triple XL yeah. Productions. I mean, yeah. Or, or, or. You have, you know, a blessed model slash penis, you know, and and all that that can, you know, do that. 
you know, there are. Yes, if you could come it, multiple times, yes, I would love to see that. Right. You know, <laughs> if, if you're able, you know, to basically, you know, make, you know, a couple shot glasses worth of semen, then by all means, you know, like that's that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But yeah. See, that, that uh, 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 porn video would be called like Splashdown or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, 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 that's multiple people coming on one person, but we won't get into that. That's another show, I suppose. Maybe. 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 Um, yeah, so I... I... I guess to go back to what I was saying, the whole point was, you know, that um, I think we put an awful lot of focus on the orgasm and, you know, the ejaculate as the, the, the goal, therefore, a.k.a. satisfactory, or that is the satisfaction. But I think this is more about communication, like what is OK? Um, you know, what what is the the thing that people want to get out of some time together? You know, is cuddling okay? Is, um, you know, going through all the motions but not actually getting off? Like, I've known a few times that I've been with some very nice men who have outright said, I don't want to get off right now. Like, it's early in the day, early in the weekend, early at the event. Like, you had a whole story about this. Well, I mean, you know, that, that they um, feel like... Something about a bathhouse? Uh, well, there was that, too. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I think that, you know, there's there's an, there's a, okay, like, I, and they know themselves well enough. I think that's more the key point. Like, you know, some people have a quick recharge period. Others do not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a diminishing return factor for most individuals over time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like, <laughs> so that's great. Like, you know, you can come, you know, like six times in an hour, mm-hmm. but by the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like, <laughs> David's applauding. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you, you know, there's less and less ejaculate as, but as you know, I've made a joke. Way way so. Right. You get to, <laughs> you get to the sixth one. And it's just kind of, yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> So, um, sometimes edging is a good thing. So, um, okay. Speaking of which, um, that's what I need need right now. That would satisfy me is a long edging session. So, okay. Um, Company with restraints. Uh, um, I, ooh, I am not the fan, biggest fan of edging. Really? I will say that. Yeah. I don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I've, I've, I've done it a couple of times and I think, well, I, let me rephrase. I'm not a fan of edging for myself. If another person wants to like knock it off and wants to like get to that point and then like back off and get to that point and then back off and get to that point and back off, I'm fine with that, you know, as well. But for me personally, I kind of want to like finish the ride, as it were, you know, go down the final hill so in basic, the roller coaster. Basically, to quote unquote edge Damon, you you need to like back off a lot earlier not just that really but like like make it so feel good was... but may, just kind of keep that lower level for a, for a while mm-hmm. so one of the things i tend to do um they're like there's there are videos and stuff online and there's even sites i believe where they kind of like it's like edging like they it's a they they you set some parameters and you turn on the site and then they give you like a timer essentially and like you you edge as it were to the timer if i'm in a good mood i could do that but most of the time when i'm in a situation with someone i really don't want to like i don't necessarily want to like hold off unless Mm. unless i mean there are some times where like well, like Gary was talking about, like, you know, being at a bathhouse or being at like a bear run or bear event or somewhere along those lines where you just got there and you find that awesome hookup like right then and there. And like, I don't necessarily want to 
do it just that right at that moment, like right within minutes of being there. Like sometimes you want to take a minute. It, well, and there, um, there's a difference between <clears throat> just not wanting to come yet versus actual full fledged editing too. Yeah. So, true. so it's, well, it's mean, just like this feels really good, but I've got all night, so I want to like save it. Well, and I'll say this: like I, my understanding and uh, I guess experience. In regards to edging has been mostly solo, like that edging is more of a you're doing it to yourself, like you're prolonging, like putting off your orgasm for several factors. One of them is like the intensity, um, potentially the amount of, you know, ejaculate. I mean, like there's there's a couple things behind that. Like, can you do that with another person or persons? Absolutely. Oh, but yeah. I think like you have to really kind of be working at that because – like all the parties kind of have to know that like we're not looking for you know a, a quick um you know moment you know that you're going to be getting off and so my my experience has mostly been it's individuals that are by themselves either on video or on cam and especially if they're on cam like they flat out like state that they're edging or whatever which in and of itself can be unsatisfactory for some individuals. Like if you want to see the other person get off, but like, you know, understandably doing it on their own timetable. Um, and I think that's really more about, you know, what you want for yourselves. And then like what that, uh, as we were saying a little while ago about like chemistry between people, what it is that they're looking for, um, you know, there's a there's a give and a take to the to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> when I guess I'll say I'll ask this because I'm kind of curious about it. When we first learned about sex, did we also learn about like what is satisfactory in sex? And if not when did that happen? Like when, Mm -hmm. when along the way did we get, did we learn like, Oh, (laughs) like there could be good and bad outcomes or pleasant and unpleasant, I guess. Yeah. You know, what? Um, I I don't think I was ever that I remember, so I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever a time where like I was searching for, the very satisfying encounter. But I knew that I had to find it. That not all, like, somehow I knew to begin with is not all my experiences would end up being necessarily satisfactory. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I didn't have the naivete that um, as long as this, this, and this happens or um, that this, every sexual encounter will be sexually satisfying. Like, as we said, said just coming doesn't necessarily mean that you had a satisfactory experience. Right. It just means you are guys. Um, what about you, Damon? Like, I mean, did you? Uh, I'm curious because your your experience. I'm gonna take a wild guess. Might be slightly related to Ray's Grace comment in the in the chat, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm reading Grace's comment right now. Hold on. <laughs> so yeah, um, funny. Okay, so while I was raised in a very religious household, I didn't necessarily have you know, I don't think we ever really talked about sex. I don't right. recall ever really having that conversation. Um, um, I learned more about sex through like, you know, sex education classes than I did from like any kind of like home advice as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and to counter that though, I did also have older brothers, mm-hmm. you know, who were about seven years older than me who had already gone through stuff, you know, and, you know, not say that they talked to me about, you know, birds and bees or all that shit, but they, they were older. So I was able to kind of see through them in some ways what their, 
pleasures or whatever were sexually. I, that sounds weird. Um, I was able to experience sex early. I'll put it like that. Um, because I had older brothers who were able to, who were still, you know, growing as well and dealing with, you know, sexual urges and what have you. So they were able to do things that I was able to watch or see because we were living in the same house kind of thing. Um, but satisfaction, I think I will admit, I think came just from the orgasm for, for me. You know, that was sort of how it, kind of the point was that I would get, you would jerk off or get off and that would be the satisfaction of doing that. Um, is that entirely true? Uh, kind of, maybe? Mm-hmm. I think that yeah. that's everyone's initial naivete about, about sex is that if you come, you were satisfied. And it's not, eh, not necessary. Then you find out well, later. Well, I think it's about experience. The yeah. more experience you have, the more you realize, like, oh, there are there are a variety of outcomes, and some are better than others. Some are more pleasurable than others. Um, and so some, the chat- some are satisfying, just not great. Does that make right. sense? You know, it, it, there's just such a level. Well, I mean, so uh, you know, this spawned an interesting kind of part of our chat where. Um, you know, Grace says I was raised Catholic. We got explicit details in the mechanics and science of sex. Satisfaction was not even remotely part of the conversation. Um, and he said that was at school, at home, but his father's attempt to have the talk with him nearly triggered a heart attack. Meaning his <laughs> father almost had a heart attack trying to even have a discussion about it. Um, cause parents of certain generations found it very awkward, um, to talk about that. Uh, Drew says, as a kid uh, with sex ed classes, to talk about the pleasure of it meant that you were promoting it and sex was not to be promoted. Um, That's, yeah. And he said that he never had the talk, but he got a picture book. Oh, how nice. Uh, And the picture (laughs) book was, where did I come from? Oh. Um, Great. So that's mostly about the mechanics. Um, And, you know, even Daniel says in the chat, you know, I was just taught the mechanics of sex. It wasn't until I started jerking off that I learned about sexual satisfaction. And I think that's probably true for a lot of males. Like Mm -hmm. I think women get far more, you know, education and possibly some like understanding of, of satisfaction, but mostly for guys, you know, it's just like you, you kind of figure it out on your own because we're so external um, in terms Mm -hmm. of like, you know, our genitalia, how it reacts and what happens with it. You know, they're just like, Oh, that's a thing. Yeah. There is the prostate though. Well, right, but that's, I mean, that's thats about education. That's also about experience. You know, when someone's like, hey, did you know that you had this button inside of you? Let me let me push on it. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, know. you know how they how they keep talking about women's G-spot? Well, you have something you could refer to as the P-spot. Well, like, <laughs> right, so how about, you know, you're growing up and, like, you, you might read in, you know, like, uh, well, because of our generation, this is pre-internet for those of you that are younger out there. Uh, you know, so you're reading in magazines about, you know, the, I think it's called the Grafenberg spot, technically, um, named after the scientist or a scientist, uh, that, um, either named it or discovered or whatever, but basically, you know, that there's this trigger point, um, you know, within a woman's anatomy that will give her, you know, the ability to have not only an orgasm, but potentially multiple orgasms, um, but, you know, years and years and years later, you're kind of like, oh, men have something like that? Like, like, where? Hello? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what's what's up with that? Um, There's so, a reason why you can get items called prostate massagers. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's also a, a part of the whole cycle of the education, but also, you know, what can be... Uh, satisfactory for people but i i think the common thing at least here in the u.s in terms of like our learning about sex was that satisfaction was not a part of the conversation Mm -hmm. if it was you were probably blessed by either a progressive education or someone Mm -hmm. who was like bringing that to the conversation as a parent or a mentor whoever was like kind of talking to you about it like i'm thinking about hadrian how his mother was so um yeah you know, sex positive or sex forward. I don't know if she really talked to him much about education, but 
you know, I know that some parents, you know, they they kind of put all the cards on the table instead of just focusing on like the birds and bees aspect. Yeah. Like, you know, this is the penis, and this is the vagina, and this, you know, sperm and an egg, and da 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 da. da. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it but, is true. Like, and I think that that's so much of a disservice to sex satisfaction when you talk about the mechanics of it. Like, it's a piston and an engine. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just parts and pieces that go together. Like it does not surprise me that people are not sexually satisfied because like, why would they be, you know, when you break it down and you're constantly saying, well, it's tab a and slot B and you don't really explain anything else. You know, you don't talk about like foreplay and preparation and lube and more lube, all the lube, you know, (laughs) Um, you know, you don't really kind of properly prepare. It's no wonder, you know, people are just kind of like, you know, not happy about it. Don't enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, Well, I I think one thing to keep in mind is that, that everyone's sexual satisfaction is going to be different. Some are going to be similar. Some people are going to find people who have similar satisfaction factory instances um but just like everybody has maybe different kinks or lack thereof of just general sexual satisfaction is different for everybody so i almost think that that it's hard to really talk much about sexual satisfaction because it's going to be different for people it, it, you you kind of have to search for it, find out what you're satisfied and even you may be satisfied in one situation but even if you repeat that in a different situation it may not be as satisfying so yeah. it, it's it's going to be very different depending on the situation so an actual like talk like if you're going to go into sex ed, it's going to uh, it's going to be more about the mechanics and then you kind of have to find for yourself what is sexually satisfying. No one's going to be able to really teach you what that is. You just have to you explore and discover it. Um, yeah. So if people keep talking about, about, hey, all my sex educations were about mechanics. And like, yeah, because that's kind of the only thing they really can talk about to really uh, explain it. You can say you can be satisfied by going through some of these mechanics, but uh, how you are satisfied and what you need to do to get that satisfaction uh, is going to depend on several different factors. Uh, The time, the person, uh, just your general chemistry between the two um, is going to affect how all of that that happens. So sexual satisfaction is not... It's not something that can be taught, but it can be learned, if that makes any sense whatsoever. No, I, I, I agree with you, Jeff. Like, I think you bring up a, a good point, you know, that like there, that you have you get down to the root basics, the commonality when you explain about sex in terms of education. But I think that they're leaving off they're leaving off that other part where they can say results may vary. Hello. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, like. Nope. Yeah. We have a frozen Gary. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um Explore where were we? Oh oh here, 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 he's, uh, back. he's back. Yeah, he's I back. think he's back. He's moving. You weren't was here for a minute. Yeah, yeah, you you were here. You, you, I'm sure you were there the whole time and you were continuing to talk. The only thing is that Skype decided that it didn't want you to talk, apparently. Rude. Um, (laughs) Well, because I heard you guys the whole time and I was like, wait, what? I'm still connected. All right. uh, What was I saying? Oh, like it took it took multiple experiences for me to be like, oh, just because you can give a blowjob doesn't mean like it's the same on the other end for them every single time. Yeah. You know, because like to be honest, different. Well, most guys that I had sex with after the first guy that I had sex with. So the first guy I ever had sex with was gay. 
still is, as much as I know, according to this <laughs> porn Tumblr account. Um, uh, but other guys, you know, that I was hooking up with, like in an adult bookstore, it was mostly straight guys. And I hate to say it, but, you know, circumstance, situation, atmosphere, you know, are all key factors in whether or not, you know, things happen. And I was surprised when I met somebody that, you know, did not respond like most people did. And that's kind of like, oh, well, my standard toolkit, whatever <laughs> the things were that I was used to doing, is not working. So in order for this to be satisfactory, I guess I got to, like, come up with new tricks or something. <laughs> you learn by experimenting. You always have. Um, I've learned just, you know... Thanks, Lady Hadrian. Um, you know that there are, there are certain things that you can enjoy doing that that people usually, generally, will like. But there are things that you can do that people don't like. Um, one of the big things for me has always been um, the, the difference between just just the simple, like the main difference between like cut and uncut penises. You know, sometimes that skin should not be moved, and sometimes it can be, and sometimes it just depends. And um, um, and some with like. With cut penises, sometimes they're not. There's not as there's some sensation, but it's different and it you know changes. And sometimes if you suck on just the head, it can hurt the person a lot more than maybe playing with like the rest of the shaft and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. practice makes practice makes perfect. Experimentation yeah. is fun. And, and the big thing to <laughs> the for, for those people uh, who who are are cut when you're dealing with a a uncut penis, just just remember. Uh, the, that you can't just yank the foreskin back. <laughs> oh no no no! I know. <laughs> you you, need, know it, how to you need to do it slowly skin. and find it. If you nope. feel any resistance, stop. <laughs> I think he don't, means the audience, Damon, uh-huh. not you. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, this is a general comment to everybody. <laughs> just girl, just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so I know uh, I'm. Doing- <laughs> I mean, maybe um, maybe that's a, another let's talk about sex uh, is uh, 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 the uh, difference between cut and uncut penises. That's true. Penis. So I mean, give a focus in the, in the chat that I thought was interesting is that during sex ed here, I remember distinctly telling uh, the teacher that um, the guy should make the gal feel like a queen and the gal should make the guy feel like a king. And like conceptually, I understand like the the idea is you know that you make the other person the priority, um, mm-hmm. and that they are you know being focused on, um, and that's part of the the satisfaction uh, that comes out of it. And I think that, yeah, I mean, we've talked about it many times. Like communication is a is a big factor, but you know, it's like what are you um, kind of putting into it, you know? Um, and continuing that, like, I'm just as guilty. Like I was at an event and this person was busy chatting me up and they were like really, you know, uh, turned on by the concept of us hooking up and stuff. And then we did, but I realized in the midst of it that like, they were really quiet because they liked being that way, but it also makes it a bit of a challenge because it's like, you know, nobody's really saying anything. So uh-huh. no one's really communicating anything. And... Yeah. Guilty. So yeah, that's what. It, yeah, that is true. Like the things that you kind of need, you want to know, sometimes don't always come into effect. Like sometimes the person is quiet and they are enjoying it, but they they are naturally quiet. Um, and you usually have to go. You have to figure out other methods or ways to kind of realize that they're satisfied. You know. For some, it's a matter of just, you know, does the dick stay hard? You know, for others, it's like, are they groaning? Are they moaning? Are they, are they resting forward while you're doing certain things because they are, they want to get more of it, you know, or if they don't stop you, (laughs) for lack of a better phrase, sometimes that's an indication that they are in some way enjoying it. Or sometimes that's not an indication of anything at all. Sometimes they're just letting you do your thing, how, whatever Fair. you're wanting to do, but it's not necessarily doing anything. They're just not speaking up. Guilty. Mm-hmm. Here. Uh, uh, 
of such things happening. But it's kind of like I really want my partner to do what they want mm-hmm. and, and what's what they feel satisfying to them. And it's hard, sometimes hard to have that thing is like they're doing this expecting that I'm enjoying it when I'm thinking they're just enjoying doing whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that's the thing that's challenging for some people is when the when the satisfaction model or paradigm is flipped. Like I think of this um, in relation to like putting on an, an event. You know, people say to me, you know, like, oh, you're so busy and you're busy working at blah, 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 blah. Like, how can you even enjoy it? And it's like, yeah, but that is the enjoyment. Like the work is the is the thing that is satisfactory. So. I think when it comes to sex, I think that that confuses people if they have this this idea, you know, that you don't seem to be enjoying it, but maybe you don't emote, you know, like you're not a, a highly expressive individual, um, you know, and that can be a challenge in and of itself. Like if you're a much more quiet and shy kind of person and you don't really say things. Um, you know, it requires that much more effort by the other individual to pay attention to what's happening. You know, like if the person is really reserved and quiet, how is their body reacting? If they're not a vocalizer, you know, what's going on in that moment? You know, are there, are there quiet little whimpers? Are there, you know, um, body twitches, you know, what are, What are the things that are going on that help you understand what's happening? You're muted, Damon. Uh, (laughs) I like watching people's hands. I know it seems weird, but their hands. Yeah. Okay. Like usually, like if they're enjoying something, they can they'll tense up. You know, Uh, or they're gripping the bed or something. Uh huh. Mm Hmm. Um, or they will, depending, you know, depending on how dominant or whatever they are, they may put a hand on parts of your body and push you forward or things. I, certain things. I, uh, sorry, so you say that, and I, sorry, David, I find it interesting when they grab you and it's that weird 50, 50 moment, like, like they grab your wrist. Uh huh. And it's like, wait, are you grabbing my wrist because you want me to stop or you're on the edge? Like, uh-huh. like is this satisfactory? Is this unsatisfactory? Mm-hmm. Like, and it can are be you a... gripping it to keep me doing what I'm doing or are you gripping that to stop me? Right. Mm-hmm. Or are you communicating like, like we're at the top of the big hill? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like this is the moment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because there's a part of me that is a oh David, you're gonna have to help me with this. I don't know if it's a sadist or a masochist. That like <laughs> that in that moment is kind of like oh no, like we're not stopping now. I think that's sadist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a person who derives plain sadist. Yeah, a person who derives pleasure, especially such a question from inflicting pain or humiliation on others. Yeah. See, I don't know if it's so much pain or humiliation. It's like, it, but to me, it's more about like taking them over the edge. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. like that they they are they are playfully communicating or in the moment of like, well, not yet, and it's kind of like, well, maybe you know, if I'm feeling more dominant in that moment, it's like, well, mm, I'm saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna keep going because I'm I want I want that reward. I want that that, that thing. <laughs> Give it to you're me like right here. You, you, you're <laughs> you're being a little sad, sadistic because they're like, I don't want to come out yet, and you're like, Oh no, you are coming. Oh, you are coming. <laughs> yes, this is happening. Whether you like it or not, you are coming. I've had, um, like, yeah, I will admit, and again, I think we all kind of can. We've all had that moment where we've been in certain spaces and certain places, and we've been working someone and you do get that pause that stop that like they they want you to stop because they are at that edge and they don't want to necessarily go over it which is well and good um for me yeah. i will stop i will stop because 
I know for their satisfaction. that I would probably want someone to I would I would want someone to stop for me. Mm. You know, if I well, wanted to stop, I would want to stop. I, I think that's more about like, did you have communication ahead of time, and are they able to verbalize or like like it, what what's going on in the moment? It's really mm-hmm. a unique experience to know. Like, is this you know, is there supposed to be a safe word? You know, am I hearing kumquat like or whatever it is that they're <laughs> supposed to say? Sorry, David. Um, <laughs> you know, um, you know. I mean, one of my favorite experiences ever with someone, which is the reason why it was a favorite, is because it was a surprise. Is because this person is very submissive, but like, like emoted in a way that was surprising to me. That like really was enjoying being tortured, and I don't mean like you know waterboarded tortured. I mean like sexually stimulated like um taken to the edge and back into the edge and back and like in different ways that i was kind of like oh alrighty then like this this could want <laughs> quite some time if necessary um mm-hmm. it was something that i you know had not had an experience with before but i was mm-hmm. like okay but it was it, it was it was something that was unearthed it wasn't something they told me about from the beginning mm-hmm. um, so yeah uh, interesting. Any other thoughts you guys have before we wrap up? About um, no. I don't believe so. I think oh. uh, this has been a satisfactory conversation. Ha 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 ha! Right. I was going to ask, are you both satisfied? I, I, <laughs> I am very satisfied. Was it satisfactory if, for you? But what if I can't get no? Satisfaction. You you can't get no, no 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> we just lost part of our audience if they're not old enough. <laughs> 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 is, is, is that is that song actually called Satisfaction? Right? Is it? Um, I can't even remember it's, who it's, saying it. It's the Stones. Oh, it is the Stones. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's it, called it, satisfaction. Just, yeah. Okay. So. It is satisfaction. All right. Because so so for getting... for all you kids out there, uh, I'm sure if you pull up it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever to service you have, I'm sure you can find the Rolling Stones satisfaction to understand what we're talking about. In any case, I just realized we could have possibly said. played that today for today's show, but you know, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Gray's been hearing that in the back of his mind the whole time. I, w- nice. I would say old. Okay, I'm 39, so I mean that's pretty old. That um, song is older than any of us have been alive. Oh wow! How old? It was released. It? it was released in '65. Oh shit! <laughs> that's even older than my brother. Right. It's over 50 yeah. years old. Wow. Anyways. I hope you've all been satisfied with this episode because that's the end. Oh. Plenty of ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Or shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Um, uh, using those places, you can fi- you can let us know what you want to know what is for future what is episodes. Uh, another way is to leave us voicemail, uh, sexy or otherwise, at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at uh, Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat and uh, speak to us uh, at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar on your computer at tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get merchandise such as this version 1 uh, Cubs Out Loud t-shirt or a version 3 sweatshirt like Gary is wearing. Uh, at zazzle.com slash comes out loud you can become a patron we thank you patrons for all your help uh in supporting the show at patreon.com slash comes out loud in fact we have a new one did you see that that's actually the new one for a while uh aaron cohen Uh. i'm surprised uh at a recent feedback we didn't mention it but thank you we appreciate it very much at patreon.com slash cubs out loud where you can get the show earlier um uh, the podcast uh, earlier as well as uh the for and after if you don't watch us live uh you can uh subscribe to us on google 
on Apple Podcasts and rate us there. You can subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box set, box puppy, box gub, box something or other. Including recon um, recently. If you... I'm back on there. Oh. It's not working out so well, but, you know, we'll just. Ooh. Yeah. Recon's hard. I will say that much. It's not the easiest, like, site to, like, be yeah. on. Anyways. Anyways. Anyway, um, if you wish to find me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear-related sites or pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you'd like to get in touch with me online, uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. Uh, for the naughty stuff that used to be Tumblr is now Twitter, you would add three X's to the end of that for my profile name. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everyone! Have a good one, y'all. very satisfied he's gonna get some sound clips so he can be satisfied over and over again <laughs> oh my god yes uh, speaking of satisfaction uh i need you to use what's across from those funerals got it got it so damon you've got gaming today yes yeah, I'm going to be, we're going to go back into my regular D&D group. We have restarted. Yay. So hopefully things are improving and we're good for now. Um, but yeah, I'll be probably leaving here in a little bit to get that taken care of. Hopefully. It's been a busy week. <laughs> That's understandable. Uh, I'm trying to make sure if we have someone for next week or what the show topic is. Mm-hmm. And then there will be that. Um, okay. So that would be next week. And then... Uh, so that really just leaves one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'm not available on the 3rd of November because I'll be at my fall retreat. Oh, okay. Yeah, just putting that out there. Uh, so... Gosh, okay. so weird that we're so close to fucking November. This month has seemed like slow, but then like all of a sudden, like, oh, we're now here we are. <sighs> okay. I'm trying to think about what to do for that show that day. Hmm. What in the world are you doing? Huh? I said, what in the world are you doing? Me? Yes. Well, so what I went to World Bear, and um, one of the things I won was a chain, barber chain. Okay. And it was in the 
one of the um, contestants raffle baskets, and I'm going to use it as my pup collar, you know, what have you, because it's I really love it actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things I realized is that they only had one clip on it attached, so that you you wear like a like a necklace, as it were. Right. So I reached out to the company and asked if they would be able to send another clip. And they did. So that was really cool of them. I kind of explained the situation that I was, you know, I had gotten it in a raffle and uh, they were like, sure, we'll send you another one. And they did. And I got it yesterday. So eventually I will. Okay, I'm back. What probably I jump back. I'm talking about my chain. Your chain? Yeah. Chain mail thing that I got um, at a uh, raffle and um, <sighs> how I reached out to the company to get another um, clasp so I can clasp them to my um, pup collar mm. or not cup collar, pup ID as it were or tag tag duh and sounds then sounds like a It sounds like something like real ID or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, they sent me another one, so I'll just have to get it attached somehow. Um, Jim said he could do it. It wouldn't be too hard. So, there we go. So, I'll eventually have a... Oh, that's cold. <laughs> I mean, it is metal. Yes, it is. And considering the climate that you guys are in, which I'm totally jealous of. <laughs> yeah. So I was telling Gary, just so you're aware, mm-hmm. uh, the first weekend in November, I'm out of town for course retreat. So that third, I will be unavailable. So next week, uh, I've got us lined up for the show that we were going to do last week. Oh, okay. Only it'll be next mm-hmm. week. Um, so. Yeah, we'll work on trying to figure out what we're going to do on the third. Mm-hmm. Damon away. No, we also have our what's going on for the month. That's yeah. It. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to pop off here and hopefully Jim is ready and we'll be heading out soon. So okay. um, I will write synopsis later tonight, hopefully, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I want to see your D&D characters. Okay. I'm just saying. Anyways, I'm going to stop streaming.